Hey everybody, Mike here with Delta Faucet. Today I'm going to show you how to install the newest evolution of Delta's single handle bathroom faucet with diamond seal technology. Now this technology is great and helps reduce leaks over the life of the faucet. To figure out which version you have and if this video will work for you, let's do a quick check. Take a look at the fittings on your supply lines. When you pull the nut all the way down, you will be able to see the red or the blue of the fitting itself above the nut. Now, if this doesn't apply to your product, we have another video for the work for you, so be sure to go check that out. Now, everything you need is together in one convenient box, including the integrated supply lines for a faster installation. Today, I'll be installing the Lahara model, but this video will work for other Delta single-handle bathroom faucets where you can see the color above the nut. One small difference could be that your model may or may not include a blue clip, but don't worry, the steps in this video will work for both, and I'll be sure to call that out specifically once we get there. Now, it's a pretty quick and easy installation, but if you find yourself needing any extra help, we definitely recommend reaching out to a professional or the Delta customer service team. Let's grab some tools for this installation. We're going to need an adjustable wrench, groove joint pliers, and some silicone. I also think it's a good idea to have a flashlight handy and also grab a towel in case we have any light water cleanup. And of course, last but not least, grab some safety glasses. All right, so get all those tools and supplies together and let's do this. Now the first step in installation is dropping our faucet down through the hole in the back of our sink. I want to point out that you'll notice I'm installing this on a single hole application. If your application at home had three holes, just be aware that there is an escutcheon plate available that you can apply to the bottom of the faucet before dropping it down onto the deck surface to cover those outside holes. Next, you're going to take your little gasket here and feed it over the end of our supply tubes and then all the way up over the mounting stud, being very careful I'm not damaging the gasket in any way as I do this, and then seating it into the bottom of my faucet, making sure it's sitting nice and flush all the way around. Now I've got the gasket in place, I'm going to start by feeding my supply lines carefully down through my hole, and I think it's helpful to have a finger on the gasket to hold it in place. I'm going to drop the entire faucet down onto my deck surface. Again, checking to make sure I don't have anything pinched, my gasket's not getting pinched, and I have a nice tight connection between the faucet and my deck surface. All right, now that we have our faucet down through our deck, we can go ahead and tighten it up underneath. To do this, I'm going to start by using my mounting bracket. Now, this mounting bracket, there's a couple things I want to point out on it before we move forward. First is you'll notice that there's these little bumps on one side of the mounting bracket. These little bumps I want to make sure are facing up, contacting the bottom of my deck surface. Second, you'll see it's kind of a crescent shape with a cutout on one side. I want to make sure that cutout is allowing space for all my tubes and everything coming down from the deck hole to make sure nothing's getting pinched or crimped as I tighten this up. And finally, I've got this little hole in the middle here that's going to slide over that threaded mounting stud and that's how I'm going to tighten my whole faucet to the bottom of my deck surface. Now that I've got that bracket in place, I can go ahead and secure it to the bottom of my deck using the included mounting nut and wrench. All right, now that I have that faucet locked into place, one thing I want to point out here is that if you ever have to remove your faucet for any reason, it'd probably be helpful to have that wrench. So a little bit of a pro tip here is I like to leave the wrench still on the nut and mounting stud back behind my sink. That way if I ever need it in the future, I know exactly where to find it. Now you'll notice the supply lines are color coded. Blue is for cold, red is for hot, so I want to make sure I'm taking my blue side to my cold stub out. Also, I can coil these lines up a little bit or make a loop out of them to help me get the end to my stub out location. However, if I do this, I want to make sure the diameter of this loop isn't any less than four inches because it could crimp the line or cause other damage. So another option is I can actually kind of make like a spiral or like a helix and bring the end of my supply line down to my supply stop. Once I've got it in place, I'm going to go ahead and hand tighten it. All right, once I've got that hand tight, I'm going to come back to it with my adjustable wrench and I'm going to turn the nut two more revolutions. So I like to keep an eye on one side of my nut here and then use my adjustable wrench and give it two more turns. All right, and there's two. And I'll make sure it's only two revolutions because I don't want to over tighten this. Just getting it nice and snug is going to be plenty for a nice watertight seal. Okay, now I've got that all connected, I'm going to do the same exact steps for my hot side. So if your faucet includes that clip that we talked about earlier, the underside is going to look like this with a swing clip and an outlet tube. And we're going to want to connect the swing clip to the bottom of the outlet tube here. To do this, I'm going to have to bend this tube up to the bottom and push it fully onto the outlet tube. But I want to make sure that I'm not going to kink or pinch my tube while I'm doing this. So I'm going to leave as big a 
circle as possible, bringing it up over the end of the outlet tube, making sure it's fully seated. And I'm gonna push this clip into place until I hear an audible snap sound. Once I've got that, I'm going ahead and give it a slight pull down just to confirm I've got a nice tight connection there. Now we can move on to the next step in the installation. Next, we're gonna start installing our drain into the bottom of our sink. But before I do that, there's a couple things we need to disassemble from the drain itself. First, we need to remove this nut from the bottom of the drain. I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew it down the threads. And then pull that off the bottom and set it to the side. And next, I'm also gonna work this rubber gasket down the drain and off the bottom. And then pull it off the bottom and set that to the side as well. Next, I also want to remove the stopper on the inside because we're going to be dealing with some silicone in a second and it can help to keep it a little bit cleaner. Also, it gives me a chance to talk about how this reinstalls. So first, we're going to push the stopper up, turn it 90 degrees, and just remove it from the drain. Now, to reinstall it, you can either reinstall it in the locked or unlocked position. Either way is totally up to you and the drain functions perfectly fine both ways. So in the locked position, we just push the stopper down and those little tabs engage into the overflow holes, making it just a little bit harder to remove. You can also install it in the unlock position by turning it 90 degrees, so you can see those tabs aren't engaged in the overflow holes anymore, and it makes it just a little bit easier to remove for cleaning. Again, either way, it functions just the same, so totally personal preference. For now, we're gonna remove it and set that off to the side as well. Next, I'm gonna flip my drain over, and I'm gonna be adding a thick bead of silicone to the underside of the flange here. With the silicone on there, I'm now gonna drop the drain down into the center of the sinkhole. Now at this point, it's okay if a little bit of silicone has smushed out the sides because we're gonna clean that up in a later step. Now with our drain dropped into place, we're gonna go ahead and mount it to the bottom of our sink. To do this, I'm gonna use my rubber gasket here. Notice the rubber gasket has a couple different sides to it. One side is angled and the other side is perfectly flat. I wanna make sure the angle side is facing up towards the bottom of my sink. So I'm gonna feed it over the tail of my drain here and then work it up over these threads tight to the bottom of the sink here. All right, now that I have that gasket tight to the bottom of my sink, I'm gonna lock it into place with the included nut. Now, just like the gasket, you'll notice the nut has a flat side to it. I wanna make sure that flat side is gonna contact the bottom of my gasket here. So I'm gonna feed it over the bottom of my drain again and then Carefully thread it over the threads. And this should thread really easily, so make sure you're not cross-threading it at all. I'm just gonna work it all the way up until it starts contacting the bottom of my gasket. Okay, now at this point, I'm gonna give it a final tighten, but I wanna make sure that my drain tail here is straight up and down. So I think it's easy to go ahead and grab the tail with one hand and then use my free hand to tighten the gasket the rest of the way to lock this drain into place. You'll notice I'm not using any tools or anything with this. Just using my hand pressure or hand tight is enough to get it right where we need it to lock into place. All right, that feels pretty good. I'm just gonna give it a final check, a little bit of a wiggle to make sure I'm getting a nice tight connection. Feels great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of my plumbing connections down here and then move up top to clean up any silicone that may have squeezed out while we were tightening everything up. I'm gonna use a clean rag and follow the manufacturer's instructions for the silicone. Now I'm gonna take my rag, just wipe it around the edge of my drain flange here, making sure I'm getting this totally clean before everything dries. Now that looks good, I can go ahead and reinstall my stopper. Just drop it down into place. All right, that looks great. So now I'm gonna let this dry following the manufacturer's instructions for cure time. Once it's fully cured, we're gonna come back here and move on to the next step, flushing our lines. Now that the silicone has fully cured my drain, we can move on to flushing our lines. Now what this means is basically running some water through our faucet in our system, making sure we're clearing any debris from it because it could cause a flow issue down the road. Now the first step is gonna be removing our aerator using this little aerator wrench that came included with your installation packet. Now you'll notice it has some grooves at the top here that are gonna correspond with the same grooves on the aerator itself. So I'm gonna reach up underneath here, fitting the wrench into the aerator, and then carefully Begin loosening it up. And once you loosen it a little bit, you can probably just get your fingers on it, take it off the rest of the way. I just want to be really careful that when I take it all the way off that this screen and the little rubber o-ring are staying in place. I'm going to set that off to the side. 
All right, so we're almost ready to start running water through our system. Now, since there's no aerator on our faucet anymore, it could start splashing a little bit more than normal. So I don't think it's a good idea to drape a hand towel or something similar over my faucet because that can help cut down on that. Once that's in place, I'm going to turn my faucet into the full mix position. And what this means is basically equal parts hot and cold, which is straight up on my handle here. Everything looks good up here, so now I'm going to move underneath and we can start controlling the flow of water from our supply stops. Okay, so here we are back under the sink and ready to flush our supply lines. Now to do this, I'm going to be turning on my cold and my hot supply stops to the full position. And also, while I'm doing this, it's a great opportunity for me to check my system for any signs of leaks. So some spots I want to make sure I keep an eye on will be where my supply lines contact my supply stops here, and then each one of my connection points along my drain system. And also, if you have that faucet that includes a blue clip, make sure you keep an eye on that connection as well, just to make sure you're not seeing any signs of leaking. Okay, once everything looks good, let's go ahead and turn these supply stops on and flush our lines. All right, that ought to do it. So now that we have our lines flushed, next we're going to reinstall our aerator. Again, I'm going to confirm the screen and the O-ring are still in the right spots. And then start it by hand. And again, this should screw really easily. You don't want to cross thread it at all. And then once you get towards the end, I'm going to use my wrench again, fitting those teeth in the aerator, and making sure I snug it up. And I don't need to over tighten this. It just needs to be snug in there so it doesn't come out. All right, I've got the aerator reinstalled and that about wraps things up. Last thing I'm gonna do is check underneath my cabinet to make sure I grabbed any tools. And also on my aerator wrench, you'll notice it has this little clip on the side of it and I can actually clip this onto the side of my supply line. So if I ever need the aerator wrench again, I know exactly where to find it. All right, looks like we're all set here. Now remember, if you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to Delta Faucet Company's customer service team. They're more than happy to help.